Hello everybody, welcome back My name is Noah This is the Big Bad Anime Channel And this is my first in my travel series An artist overseas I recently had a bit of a I don't know, kind of a period of, of low inspiration I was feeling cooped up, I was feeling stuck in the house I needed to get out, I needed to find some inspiration so, I recently traveled to a beautiful little island in the middle of the Mediterranean named Ibiza, or Ibiza, depending on where you're from. And I gotta say, it really, really inspired me. And I wanted to share some of the videos and some of the artwork that I did over there. Now, Ibiza traditionally has always kind of been known as a party island, an escape to go dance and play in the sunshine and I was definitely looking for some sunshine and some relaxation but not so much the party variety before I got to the island I had to take the the long long journey uh, from LA to New York New York to Barcelona and then finally from Barcelona onto a visa I found even the airport in Barcelona was amazing, beautiful, very interesting architecture. Uh, people were very pleasant. And then finally, finally I arrived in Ibiza. As you can tell just from the videos I was taking, I was a little, I was um, delirious. I hadn't slept and I was just awestruck by almost everything. It was like everywhere you looked there was something beautiful to see. And the people were amazing, very welcoming. The food was mm, unbelievably good. And overall the trip was five stars. Just a wonderful trip and it really kind of fed my soul. Fed my, you know, filled that inspiration well up. Kind of to overflowing really. And that's what I was looking for. That's what I needed. And that was just such a nice breath of fresh air. And you might be asking yourself, so you flew halfway around the world to find some inspiration to draw. Well, what did you draw? What did you do with that inspiration? And here we are. That's the part of the program that we are in right now. So thank you for asking that question. Perfect segue. One of the things that I noticed once I got out of my bubble, my little sphere over here in LA is well, the first thing I noticed was the people. Now, obviously, you know, I draw a lot of people, a lot of faces. So that makes sense. That's kind of what I'm tuned into. But it's hard to explain. But when the faces change and the people are, are just very interesting. Once I stepped outside of my little world, I started to notice just, just how much character and style everybody had. And how much... I don't know, just how well put together everybody seemed. It was, it was, it felt like a not a fashion show, but everybody was very well put together, and I love that. I love to see people uh, show out and, and really put on, you know, dress up to the nines and all that. And even more specifically, I will say, I mean, I wouldn't be the first person to notice that the women in Ibiza are absolutely gorgeous. I mean, in a way that in a natural kind of way that I just don't see as much over here in LA. Not to say, I mean, obviously California has a, uh, a large amount of very gorgeous women. So, so it's different, it's just different. And that's one thing I really wanted to embrace just overall, just how different life is halfway around the world and how different the people are, the traditions, the customs, the food, everything, just kind of drink in the culture absorb it all up like a sponge and hopefully the aim would be to have that come through in the work to have that show in the art that I did both over there and as soon as I came back and if I sound different it's because it changes you you know that's one of the beautiful things about travel getting out of your comfort zone physically in your actual physical body is a bit harrowing you know it's a heck of an experience top to bottom but more than that it, it changes you for the better it gives you a whole different perspective on life people the world and eventually your art you might 
might say, okay, yeah, 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 that's all fine, well and good, and we appreciate that, but what about the drawing? And, well, you'd be right. I, I think that I tried to infuse or inject a lot of playfulness. As you can see with this character I'm working on right now, I'm just... The thing that I preach the most is have fun with it and then fix anything that doesn't work later. You know, I, I think especially with digital art, it's so forgiving. You have so many options that there's really no excuse to not try stuff, to not go for something different. And for my traditional artists out there, I haven't forgotten about you. I know we work in layers in Photoshop or Krita or whatever program you're working in. But there's a way to do that even just on the sketch page. And you see me working in iterations. I do that even when I'm working traditionally, which is a pencil, a uh, white, prismacolor, colored pencil, and an eraser. And the way I do that is each iteration starts off very, very, you know, from the beginning I start very lightly, very kind of, I hold the pencil far back kind of towards the eraser and just let it be a way more gestural sketch and then as I do the second draft or the second iteration I tighten my grip on my pencil just a little bit and I move my hand down the pencil towards the lead just a little bit more. and so each time you see me do that digitally there's a way to do that in the real world too it's a little less forgiving and it's a little more challenging but if you're up for the challenge I think you got it so just take it light to start with and as we get darker, as we get closer to the, the ink rendition, you're going to get a little tighter in your grip and the lines are going to get just a little bit more dug into the paper, just a little, and you're going to be a little bit more precise. And that's why we do from gestural sketch all the way up to the ink pads. That's why we work in the way that we do it, because it, it provides, it gives us about three or four different chances, if not more, to fix, to learn, and to grow within our own process. So as you're going, you're seeing things that don't work, things that you messed up, and that's a great chance to learn and grow. And it's also a really good chance to practice not taking yourself too seriously. You can see the things that don't work, you can see the things that you need to fix, and you can still be playing, and you can still be having fun. Those things can all occupy occupy the same space at the same time so don't fret don't worry and try to be playful try to not take yourself too seriously and that will provide you a lot of wiggle room to just do the unexpected do the thing that that maybe people weren't looking for and it's exactly what the sketch the drawing the project requires or needs it just nobody knew until you brought it to the table that's the kind of stuff we're looking for and that takes a lot of failure and falling down and doing things that don't work the first time in this stage of the sketch or piece that i'm working on it's what we would consider in the creative process the blue sky part of the process which means essentially you're just coming up with all the ideas that you can that fit within the parameters and seeing what works the best and what doesn't. But there aren't any wrong ideas. There are no bad ideas within that blue sky part of the creative process or the project. And so embrace what comes and then chase the thing that you love the most. You know, don't, don't denigrate or look down on anything that isn't necessarily working. You just come up with a whole batch of things. Oh, yeah, boatload of stuff. And then you can just pick and choose. You can cherry pick the stuff that really, really works and refine it, or you can take the stuff that kind of works or doesn't work and, and fine tune it to make it work, if that makes sense. And there will be time later on for refinement, more refinement, notes, changes, some stuff you just go back to the drawing board with. Some stuff you take little things that work and then use those later. You just, you, you have all the options in this part of the creative process. So I would say embrace that, have fun with it, and, and you know, really just live it up because it'll get tougher later. 
there's time for that. Right now is the time to play and rejoice in that and just see what comes of it. You know, you never really know until you try. And we'll go into all of these stages of the creative process in more depth in another video later. Don't worry about that if you're like, wait, 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 what's that? Go back. I need to know more about this. I'm going to do a whole video just outlining one through, I believe it's five or six steps, generally speaking, in the creative process. And this goes for when you're working on your original projects, your original characters, all the way up to professional studio projects. And I've seen this work in many different contexts with a lot of different types of personalities and, and creatives and talents. And it works. And there's a reason it's tried and true and it works and people utilize it over and over again. So we'll go through that in greater depth later. But for now, we're just having fun sketching, taking that, that joie de vivre I got on the, on the travel and, and using it putting it towards something, finding a home for all that inspiration. And as I go deeper down the sketch rabbit hole, if you will, um, as I get closer to the ink pass, as I get more refined, there's usually a, a tendency to tighten up. And I don't mean a good way to tighten up. I mean stiff characters, stiff forms, things that you, you know, you're trying to be perfectionistic. So things tend to get more serious in inverted quotation marks and I think that's a mistake at least from my perspective I'm actually trying to push the forms in the other direction I'm trying to push these characters to look more organic more gestural more like middle middle of the action right in the middle of it boom and that requires every pass that I do every sketch iteration to be a little bit more of the personality character that I saw in there in the beginning. You know, I'm, I'm hunting for that original vision, if you will. Anyways, this is just part one. We're just getting started, you guys. Uh, this is my travel series to Ibiza. This is some of the work that I, it was one of the sketches that I worked on when I was over there. I got a whole bunch of stuff stocked up and locked and loaded for you guys. Uh, this is Big Bad Anime Channel. My name is Noah. It has been my absolute pleasure and my honor to be here today. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, things you want to work on in the future or see me cover, please drop them in the comments. Subscribe, like, you know all the good stuff. Thanks again. Take care. Peace.